Hey, this is Anthony Hannigan. Welcome back to musicmoose.org. We are going to get into some finger exercises today. We've had a lot of uh, feedback on this and how we can um, develop speed and tonation. And it's quite simple. It's not a gigantic mystery whatsoever. Again, you're going to get so much out of the instrument by putting time into it. And one of those things, is just like anything else, if you started walking daily, it's going to hurt for a little while, and then it's eventually going to build muscle and dexterity, and you're going to be able to walk for miles. And with running, any kind of activity that you do, it's the same with playing the mandolin. And pretty much the fingers are just there on the hand waiting to pick up stuff. They're not really used to doing other things with. And um, I know there's some folks out that have, have some sort of handicaps or another, and I was one at one time. I've had this hand right here, my right hand, operated on three times. And... Um, it's really, I mean, it, it can be troublesome, but it's definitely not going to put you down. You can continue on, and there's ways you can get around certain things and not get fatigued at the same time. Now, early on in some of the, the uh, training videos, we got into some little exercises. I'm going to try to just stretch that out a little bit here. And one of the ones I can't emphasize enough, is, you know, we go back to our simplistic views on things. Let's just try the index finger on the G string on the second fret. And we're just going to push it down just so we can feel that. And try, you know, what you want to do here too with the right hand is work some on volume too because what's going to naturally happen, you're going to feel your left hand pushing down harder and you, you don't want to do that. You actually, you want to just, just get it down enough to push down and get a nice clear tone. And then what we want to do is add the next finger. Get these guys working. And a nice way to do this too, you can throw yourself a handicap, is just put the other two fingers underneath the neck. One of the best mandolin players I've ever seen in the country only had two fingers and he lived down in Virginia. Just an amazing player. And some of the stuff that I saw him do was just mind-blowing to me at the time. So I used to sit there afterwards, I was down in Galax, and I would sit there and I used to put my fingers underneath the neck here, just trying to get a feeling of what it was like to have that kind of handicap. And coming from playing with all fingers and seeing how people persevere and move ahead with that, it's just, you know, two more fingers you can do so much. This guy did quite a bit with just the two. So now what I want to do, I've got these two fingers going. Let's throw this other guy. Chromatically, we're just going to walk up on the G string on the second the third, the fourth, and the fifth fret. Now, things are probably feeling pretty good. Everyone's been using these two fingers for the little chords. Let's walk it up and walk it back. Now, let's spread it out a little bit. And you can start stretching that up too. But now this is where the pinky will come into effect. You want to start working that one a lot. And what I'm going to do here is just the second. I'm going to work it up on the second fret. Do the one, four, five. I'm just working it up till I get to a comfortable speed. And then down. Or up. Depends on what music school you come from. Now down here in the E string, it's gonna, you're going to fight a little bit to get some volume. But right here, stretching that pinky out is key. Is I can't emphasize how important that is. And just if you want to just work on the pinky, a lot of times what I'll do is eliminate these two fingers and just play with the index finger and the pinky and just kind of do your now all I'm doing there is a one or a two three four two with the index finger and then the three and the four with the pinky and then go So you can stretch it out and you'll feel it right down in here in the tendons in between the fingers and it's going to hurt like a son of a gun for a little while but then eventually with each day and each time you play it's going to get better and better i promise and we want to stretch it out and kind of pick at the same time you know do our down and up and 
that's a pretty good one right there. You're doing two down to ten. And you can, you know, you can get down to the eleven or even the twelve. If you can go much further than that, you need to send me a video of you playing because that's that's pretty far. And that, but when you start straight, you're going to feel it in the back of your hand. You don't want to overdo it too much, okay? Um, you don't want to overdo it at all, really. You want to, When you start feeling a little bit of pain, a great thing to do is just take your fingers. You know, what I do is just take them and kind of just push them back a little bit. Stretch them out. Give them a little rest. Shake them, okay? Get them right back up there. Get right back on the, the mandolin and just start stretching them out again. Next thing you know, you'll be playing a lot of your scales. You can you can really improvise over way of, or you can just throw them out there. You need that pinky, and you need the other fingers too. And it's just as important. I think your your ring finger and your pinky are probably going to give you the most trouble. And if you start stretching them out early on, or even as long as you've been playing the mandolin, get get them in the equation and start playing a lot more. You will definitely be a happier mandolin player. Well, that's it for the pinky and rest of the finger exercises. Thank you so much for dialing this up today and joining us here on musicmoose.org. Help spread the word. Moose on, everyone.